Hi, this is Sajan Bhartia and welcome to another episode of TFR Insights. And today we have with us Giral Wenzel, Distinguished Product Manager at Oracle. Giral, first of all, welcome to the show. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, today we will talk about the announcements your team recently made. Talk a bit about the, that announcement. Yes, yeah, so we have just announced the Autonomous JSON database. Uh, another member of the Autonomous database family on the Oracle Cloud, uh, specifically targeted towards JSON developers, developers who want to store and manage JSON documents in a cloud-native database. Can you uh, kind of emphasize a bit on the autonomous part of that? Because you know Oracle has been doing an you know, Oracle Autonomous Database, then Automated Linux came out. So I want you to just kind of talk a bit about the autonomous part of JSON. Here. Absolutely. So one of our big passions is, and where we think the future of data management lies, is we want to take away the management overhead of databases from the developers, from our customers. So as we have moved to the cloud, it's gotten really easy to provision new databases, to get hold of a new database and start working with them. But still developers have to figure out, okay, do you need an index on a certain column? Why is my query slow? How do I format my data? And so forth in the database. And we want to kind of take all of that away. We believe that databases and uh, technology in general has been smart enough to take these management overheads or burdens away so that developers and our customers can just focus on providing business value. Awesome. Uh, you you did touch upon that, but I also want to, to understand a bit, how does it really help developers? You know, if you look at their workflow, if they look at pipeline, how does it autonomous JSON makes their job easier and also kind of streamline their workflow and pipeline? Yeah, so, uh, you know, JSON in general has become very popular with developers because they don't have to think about data models and how to structure the data to begin with, right? But so it makes it easy to get data into a database and get going really quickly. But where usually the, the devil is in the detail when you have petabytes of data, maybe even terabytes of data, when you get to the access patterns of it. So this is where you usually go, okay, my database has grown, now it gets slower, why is my response time slow, what do I do? And uh, traditionally this has been where, you know, an on-premise world years and years ago where the DBA would have come in and would have essentially tuned your query, create an index there, partitioned your data and so forth. And that part we see is, is still uh, very, very cumbersome and a lot of overhead for developers, especially now for developers in the cloud, where they don't necessarily even have DBAs to rely on anymore. So while it's easy to get started, we want to make sure that as they keep growing, their data keeps growing, the business is more and more successful, that the database grows with them and basically never ever gives them any um, troubles or, or signs of uh, the response times getting too slow, we're losing money, what's going on and so forth. Just take all of that away and autonomous JSON database essentially offers that. That's the next step to, to the JSON databases out there on the cloud. You can easily get a JSON database on the cloud, but this self-driving aspect of basically having a database you never need to worry about that just knows and does everything right by itself that's the next step that we have introduced with Autonomous JSON Database. And which clouds uh, are you supporting? So Autonomous JSON Database runs on Oracle Cloud. It's part of the Autonomous Database family. It also runs on our cloud of customer and dedicated regions. And the JSON functionality itself, so the capabilities of storing JSON and querying JSON, is actually part of Oracle Database since 2014, since a long, long time. Right. So, uh, you know, this autonomous JSON database, you know, it automates almost everything there. What about uh, when you talk a database, what about high availability? What about disaster recovery? Are you offering two nines, three nines, four nines, five nines? So it's part of the Oracle Cloud of the Autonomous Database family. So the same guarantees that we have with Oracle Autonomous Database, we also offer for Autonomous JSON Database. So we offer four and a half nines of availability, but also disaster recovery, uh, security, site failures, etc., all is part of the offering as well. Those were the early kind of steps why people wanted to move to the cloud. They didn't want to have to worry about that. And Autonomous JSON Database just offers the same as we have with Autonomous Database and, and Oracle Cloud in general, right? So we have the availability domains, uh, we have the high availability disaster recovery guarantees, and also the security guarantees. So Another aspect of, uh, of where Autonomous JSON Database goes a step further is uh, for us, developers don't have to make a choice whether they want to encrypt their network connection to the database or they can potentially forget to do so. That's all just turned on by default, relying on all the goodies 
of the Oracle database that's there since years and years that's industry proven that strengthens over the, the decades of Oracle database. So really for a developer, those are concerns that they don't have to think about anymore with autonomous JSON database. They can just focus on building their app, on getting the work done that they are asked to do and not kind of later on be asked, oh, did you, you know, did you remember to turn on encryption? Did you remember to, you know, uh, make sure that, that the access patterns are, or the access privileges are correct and so forth. All of that is kind of taken care of by the database. Can you give some kind of examples of developers, you know, kind of consuming, leveraging autonomous JSON? Yeah, so JSON has become very popular over the, the last couple of years, almost a decade, right? With the first JSON document databases coming out there, it's kind of a re-emerge of what we had in the early 2000s with XML was very similar. And, you know, one of the, the benefits of why people love JSON so much is because it's a, it's a self-contained hierarchical format. So your business object or the, the data you're dealing with, is all self-contained in one JSON document. And that's usually what's transmitted over the web, over REST calls or any other means. So that is kind of where it becomes nice. So applications already have to consume or send those REST calls, they already have to deal with these JSON documents. And it was only a natural step going one step further and saying, hey, what if we could also just store these JSON documents in the database without having to go back and forth from relational rows and columns? So use cases are really everywhere in the industry, right? So we have customers that uh, manage their insurance policies in JSON documents, right? So it's like a policy is very lengthy written legal document that doesn't natu naturally transform into rows and columns of the relational format, but we still want to be able to process it with machines and JSON is such a human readable but machine processable format. So that's one aspect, right? Another aspect is pretty much any mobile application on, on, uh, on our mobile phones uh, sends REST calls to the server backend, sending JSON off usually uh, that we then want to process further. Um, IoT devices, same thing, smart meters, sending off that data. We want to store the data as is uh, and then analyze on top of that as well. Um, and last but not least, we even have another a good example is uh, uh, hardware manufacturers that send JSON data as diagnostic information into uh, their, their server farm or into the cloud database that they're using for the analysts to then be able to troubleshoot what's wrong with the individual hardware. But then they also want to kind of look at the data and figure out, hey, do we have a faulty component in, in, for example, a laptop, right? It's like, so basically, let's look at all the incidents that we got over the last two months and see whether we find any patterns, see whether we find anything that, oh, maybe the fan got faulty, we have to replace this and so forth. So those are just a couple of use cases, but it's virtually all across the industries that we see Jason these days. Awesome. Thanks for explaining that. Now, uh, there are other, you know, uh, solutions you know, similar to that one. So uh, I don't want to name any competitor, but you know why would somebody choose you know this over let's say whatever MongoDB is offering? Yeah, so uh, you know again it's the autonomous part of it. So even with the competing databases, they are easy to spin up in the cloud and they're easy to use, but they still have these management overheads in there, right? You still have to worry about secondary indices, making sure that your queries are fast. You still have to worry about uh, um, how you're going to analyze the data, perhaps even restructure to analyze the data. Uh, and all of these aspects that, again, the traditionally the DBAs kind of have gotten evolved and they just now are not necessarily in the picture anymore. So with autonomous database, what we have done here is that we kind of give developers a database where you just don't have to think about this, right? The, the autonomous database uh, has all the performance tuning built in, right? It kind of, it knows itself, okay, uh, should I run a query a parallel across many CPUs? Should I cache this data in memory? Should I create an index on this and so forth? And basically all of that goes away. And that's not necessarily true for the competing products. They're easy to spin up and easy to use and get going to start JSON, uh, you know, start storing JSON, managing JSON data in it. But as they grow, um, developers still have to worry about this. Another aspect that we have seen, for example, a very simple aspect is actually uh, scaling the database. So autonomous database, the whole family, including autonomous JSON database, offers true serverless uh, and fully online scale scalability or scaling capabilities. That means if you need more processing power, you can just tell the database to scale itself and it will just require more CPUs to process whatever the workload requires uh, um, to be processed on. With other databases, you have to go through fixed size shapes, you have to resize. This is all manual processes. Sometimes they even 
require uh, an outage to your workload or even a browner to your application that you may or may not be willing to take. All of these kind of concerns and worries and having to think about are we taking away with autonomous JSON database. And that's why we think this is very attractive to developers because again, we're kind of the slogan that we're using is just a database that works, that just works. So don't, for, don't worry about the database, forget about the database, start storing your data and get on with your application. That's essentially what we're trying to do here. Is there any, uh, I mean, of course, I'm pretty sure there are some open source components also. Can you talk about the open source components of uh, autonomous JSON? Yes, yeah, so one big aspect of this is um, our document API. So with the document stores out there, uh, one thing that we have seen uh, very early on is as well that people say, okay, we don't want to do tables and columns anymore. We don't want to do insert uh, into updates, selects, and so forth anymore. But we want to have some more APIs that are natural to the application uh, itself or to the developer itself. And so these document APIs have emerged essentially where we talk about collections of documents and, and put in or store a document and get or retrieve a document. Um, and even query documents with like by what we call query by example by passing in another document. So kind of staying very natural and native to the APIs that we use in our in, in, in the programming languages or in the applications. And so one thing that we have done is we have introduced our own document API that we call SODA, short for Simple Oracle Document Access. And uh, what SODA does is essentially gives you these document API capabilities on top of autonomous JSON database, as well as on top of Oracle database. So you can start using it as a document store like, like all the others that are out there. And that API itself is also fully open source and it was from day one. So we, that, uh, we have seen very uh, good uptake on it from the developer community, also from our customers. They can use the API, they can contribute to the API. It's fully open source. It's out there on our GitHub repository uh, and uh, you know, just ready to be used, ready to be contributed to if people want to. So another, another benefit that we're having is that uh, we actually don't have developers decide between whether they want to use a document API or a SQL, because we think there's use cases for either of these methodologies. And there's many people that know SQL very well. There's many libraries and tools out there that know SQL very well. And SQL is very powerful for analyzing data. And so Autonomous JSON Database allows developers to use both whenever they see fit. So we have the document APIs that they can use to store, retrieve documents. But we also allow them to run SQL over these documents as well. For example, when you want to do some aggregations across collections or perhaps even some more uh, analytical queries, offering the full power of the Oracle SQL engine on top of the JSON data as well. I think one, one thing we probably should also still talk about, so we can up, uh, kind of convert it to autonomous transaction processing. So, you know, if, if the JSON developers ever want to go, okay, now I want to do more than just JSON, perhaps add relational, they can just click one button and it becomes autonomous transaction processing and they don't have to do anything else, nothing else changes. So that's one advantage if they, usually what we see, you know, when use cases widen and you say, okay, now I do have some requirements for relational data as well, or perhaps graph data, uh, rather than having to, you know, use another service or convert or export import, we can just click a button. Uh, and, and it becomes autonomous transaction processing. Gural, thank you so much for taking your time out and uh, talking about autonomous JSON database. And I look forward to talk to you again. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thanks and have a good day.